Hey guys, Chris Serino here from the Sultana Education Foundation. Today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about stone tools, axes in particular, that were used by the indigenous people of the Chesapeake region. And I'm here at the Holt Education Center standing next to a really famous painting made by an artist named John White. John White in 1585 traveled to what we would today call the Outer Banks of North Carolina and made a series of watercolor paintings, including this incredible scene here from a village he called Pamiac. Uh, this is an example of a palisaded town, which means that it was surrounded by a defensive wall. So you can imagine all the work it would have taken to cut down all these trees, delimb them, dig these post holes, and then make a wall like that. Not to mention the saplings that were needed to make these bent arches that created the structures that the natives used to make their homes. So how did they cut down these trees in an age before they had metal tools? So the way that the native people of this area cut down these saplings and larger trees, one way is they used fire. Some of these trees would have been gigantic, 18 feet around at the base. So they would light fires around the base of the trees, burn the wood until it got really nice and charred, and then they would come behind with a stone ax like this. So this is an example of a, sh a shallow grooved stone ax made out of a type of stone called basalt. This was found on a beach on the Chester River. If you look real carefully, there's a little groove here where a stick would have been split in the middle and would have been wrapped around here with sinew or deer hide. And then they've sharpened the edge by basically sanding this down on harder stones. They would tie this to a stick and then cut. Here is a smaller ungrooved axe. So this axe uh, would have been obviously used to cut down smaller saplings or shrubs. And again, it's basalt. It's been smoothed down to a nice sharp edge. So right here, I have a reproduction. In other words, this is a modern tool made by a reenactor that we hired to make this. And it's really an incredible piece, but it shows you how an ungrooved axe might have worked. This is made out of a type of stone called Catoctin greenstone, again, a type of basalt that would have been traded for from the Appalachian Mountains down the river systems to the Chesapeake Bay. It's a beautiful piece that's been beautifully polished to a really sharp edge. And you can see the way that it's been mounted in this hardwood here. And then the, and the natives might have used ash or oak or hickory as they essentially burned and then scraped a hole right through this. And the piece just sits in that hole. So as I'm chopping, every time I make a strike, it actually further secures the ax head into this shaft here. And then if I need to resharpen it or the blade gets dull, you could just take another stone and hit from the other end and pop it out and resharpen it and pop it back in. It's been reinforced here with sinew so that the, the stick doesn't break as you uh, are whacking your, your, your trees down. So this is just an incredible piece of technology used throughout the Native American world here in the Mid-Atlantic region. So to wrap up, the Native Americans in the region had an incredible need to cut down trees and saplings to make their homes, to make these defensive walls called palisades. To do that, they either used grooved axes like this or an ungrooved ax like this. And you can imagine the labor that went into making a community like Pamiac down there on the, the outer banks of North Carolina. That's a little piece of history here from the Sultana Education Foundation.